Alright, so this is your boy Pablo in the building. So we got Fire King of the Zane Zines versus Hats. Um in this matchup in this matchup, Hats versus Fire Kings is always gonna be inside of Fire Kings player's favor because of the fact that when Grunix touches the field, the only the only answer to Grunix is bottomless. Bottomless or some or some more into the onslaught. Anything else anything else would be inside the the Fire King player's favorite. Unless the hat player decides to use Vandy's emptiness, which kind of hurts them in a way, but then again, Fire Kings, they have, they have, they're pretty strong monsters to deal with the hat player's, you know, shenanigans. So, in this change that I did with the, with the, Zane, with the Fire King of the Zane Zane is that I added supply squads in there. Now, the reason why I gave in to using supply, supply squads Versus the one that I said, you know, from last video. For one reason, because of the fact that if I'm playing at 60 cards, I'm not going to draw, I'm not going to draw, you know, into the monsters that I don't want to draw. Like, for one, I don't want, I don't like drawing to a Grunix. I, I hate drawing to a Grunix. Why? Because of the fact that, you know, it's food for Onslaught. But then again, when you look into a Fire King, into a Fire King deck, Yasha also, you know, eliminates the problem of drawing Grunix because, okay, from one, okay, if Grunix in your hand, okay, bring out onside, onside out Yasha. Yasha will pop the Grunix in your hand, and next thing you know, you have, you have, you have big, big bird Grunix on the field, just blowing things up. Now, versus on the Zang Zing side. Now, the reason why I didn't like putting supply squads in Zang Zings because of the fact that if you draw one of your Zang Zings, that's less. That's less fuel that you have. That's less fuel you have for for protection plays and for offensive plays. Because for one, Zang Zings are the ones that are, are the ones that are going to be you know pushing well not pushing but it's going to be carrying you at most. Now, now with those two together, hats don't really stand a chance as much because of the fact that okay. I have to worry about the Zane Zings, then I have to worry about the Fire Kings. Now, their best bet to deal with to deal with this deck was to go into Dweller. But in this case he went to number one on one. Which kinda which kinda, you know, threw me off a bit. Then also too as well, he misplayed by bringing out his Wolf Bark, knowing that his his Chop Trip monster was inside the XYZ materials of number one on one. So for one, right there, I was, it's already in my favor. So I bring out those two monsters, and I I went for the Black Rose play during his turn, so that I could deal with, <clears throat> so I could deal with um, so I could bait out more of his back row. So I flip a Torrential, get rid of both his monsters. So now, so now right there. I'm only taking 21 damage compared to taking 21, another 21, and 17. So right there, you'll see, you're gonna see this. You'll see one. You'll see one Grunix just shut down has completely, just shut it down completely. So he's gonna decide to. Well, for one, I get rid of the number one on one, but then he has Chop Trick Nightmare, and you and you see how you see how Grunix just eat up his back row. It's just eating him up alive. Most players they don't really side for Fire Kings because they don't really see him around as much. Besides the fact, you know, besides the one that that has taught recently. I mean, it's I mean Fire Kings they're still pretty strong. They'll still be really good for this format. It's a one card out to Midrash. Well, window now, but I like to call I like to call the Shadow Monster Midrash because you know it's. It's scary. It's scary to say, oh, you know, that's mid rash right there, so you better watch out for her. So right there, he's gonna soul charge. I'm gonna put my song morning because I don't wanna deal with his shenanigans. I don't know if he plays another number one on one. So right there right there it's already in my favor. I'm not gonna flip up I'm not gonna flip up Ancient Forest. Not flip up, but I'm not gonna activate Ancient Forest yet. Now for one right there, he can't do anything about it. And he scooped up immediately. So, let's go into game two. All right, game two. I cited out the supply the supply squads out, and I and I cited in the light imprisoning mirrors, and I cited out another card out. I forgot which which one it was, 
but I cited in the Lava Golems too as well because Lava Golem also deals with also deal also deals with the hands and also too as well I can just sit on Lava Golem for days. So he decides to go first. He sets up he sets up a two card setup right there. But towards my hand, my hand is pretty good. I could have I should have went for a mathematician first to see if to see if I could bail out that song warning, but then again I didn't know if he had song warning or not. But you know, it is it really doesn't even matter because okay, for one you got rid of I got rid of a, a warning turn one, which is extremely good if you're in a tournament match or in any type of match, because of the fact that now any any of my big plays cannot be stopped now. So because he flipped up Solemn warning, all my onslaughts are going through. They're going through. They're going to punish him for whatever he does. And the reason why I didn't set any spells and traps because I wanted to get rid of the ice hand immediately. So after I got rid of the ice hand, I set my two back row up. And now he can't really do. He does. He goes for the soul charge play. I'm gonna flip the bombless because for one, if he makes um, mirror guys or dweller, or a sight knight, it's gonna hurt me a lot. And I rather keep my back row and keep him on his. I rather keep his X Y Z deck sealed, and make him burn up his hands. And for one two as well, if he didn't if he didn't go for the X Y Z play, then that means I I have to deal with. A fire hand and ice hand on the field, which is kind of unblockable in a way, unless I have a dark hole. But in this deck, I don't play dark hole because I don't know why. I should play dark hole, maybe. But then again, I like torrential better than dark hole in this format. But I keep it in a side deck though. So he flips a torrential chip. He still dropped the max C, indicating that he is going. He is desperate right now. He's desperate. He needs. He needs something to keep him going. But then again. I really didn't care about the maxi challenge because for one, if I know you're playing hats, I'd rather have you draw your hands and draw your more text so I could kill your your sanctums, kill kill your hat plays, kill all that stuff. Now for one, okay, what's the most devastating thing inside hats that you have to worry about? Sanctum, right? Now why if he draws all his more text within that maxi? Sanctum is dead. And all and the only way to make his sanctum even alive again unless he makes emerald, which I'm not gonna allow that to happen because for one, the moment you make an emerald, I'm going to I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a synchro play. So right there, he destroyed the monster, I synchro for Amadis instead of going for the back rows. Now he could have went he could have composed. He could have composed away to Armadis, but he missed his time to do so. So I swing, kill the more attack, attack, and then he composed my Earth Dragon, which really didn't hurt me that much because it's fine because now I have another Zing Zing in my hand. So he goes for the Embassy to get rid of the Light Imprisoning Mirror, which you know, it really, it, it really didn't even matter. I don't know why I set the card in the first place because I had you know Amadis, and right there he scooped up immediately, and that's. Firing into the Zang Zing. Do you see how you see how much this deck counters hats pretty hard? Even under a max C, he couldn't do anything about it. So let's go into the bonus. Alright, so the bonus video today would be 60 card summons with the dragon rules inside of them. Now this deck it's pretty fun to do and I think for competitive play. I would I would make a few adjustments to it. A few adjustments. Now, if I would have went first, I would have had a pretty decent field, but because I had Royal Archer in my hand, I didn't really care about going for a field grant because of the fact that I just want to get pluses going. Because for the fact that, okay, if you make Adso and I called it wrong, I would have, you know, sent his back row on top of the deck, <clears throat> and that would have hurt him a lot. So, I count. So before I had one for Phoenix Wing Blast, I had to count the cards that he has on the field towards the card that I had in my hand. And for one, I didn't want to deal with a Excite Knight blowing up my field and him just setting up cards out the ass. So <clears throat> because of that, that's why I think it's me last. So end phase, Monstervania gets rid of gets rid of his monster. I should I should have went for the back row of course. I know I know guys are gonna say that in the comments below, but you know, it is what it is. I really didn't care for the back row because of the fact that I have Rose Archer. So I milled, I milled pretty good. I put the guy to put the sage coil on top, 
and I have and I put about charity. The reason why I put Sage Aquaria over over like any other silver monster because of the fact that Sage Aquaria can potentially, you know, become a, a huge combo. So for one right here, I go for Hammer Tree for Flower Knight. Flower Knight and it adds those effects to the trigger. So I can put uh back row back on top. So now he's so now his deck is backed up by three cards. And on top of that, I get Sage Aquaria's effect to go off. So now I get another Lone Fire that's going to set up for a another huge play. And before he decides to start scooping, <clears throat> I get the Princess Sprout, and he scooped immediately. What I was going to do right here was Princess Sprout effect to mill a card and put it back on top. So I use the other Hermit Trees effect, bring it back onto the field, make it a level 7, then going for Aurora. Aurora. Oh, oh, Aurora? Excavate three cards and then bounce. And if it's any plant type monsters, bounce those cards back to the hand and just attack for the game. So, this is why you play Guard Oak. And this is your boy, Paul Blake. Out, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will have another video sooner or later. Ciao.